it's very hard to ask a rocket guy how confident they are on the very first launch because 100% of them fail, but it just depends where they fail. And that's what we're looking at. Do we get off the pad? How much flight time do we have? You know, can we get through the first stage burn? And, you know, basically we've got 400 sensors on the rocket. So as much flight time as we get, we prove out more and more of the technology. So I'm personally hoping to A, get off the pad. My chief engineer says if we get off the pad, we'll have at least 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds ish of flight time. And if we do, that'll be considered a very successful first flight. So if it does go ahead, your attempt would be the first such launch from Australian soil in some five decades. Why isn't someone in Australia already doing this? I think it's a fact that in, the, in this country, I think there's this belief or disbelief that we can do anything that's really tricky. And, you know, when I first started the company, I had so many people tell me it was crazy. You know, people in the government said it would never happen. You know, people in the Defence Department said it was crazy. So I think we just put these barriers in front of us in this nation. And I spent a lot of time working overseas and the rest of the world doesn't have those barriers. They just get on with it. And so when I decided I wanted to do this, I didn't care that it hadn't been done before. I just knew it was possible. A lot of other countries have done it before, so I just said, let's do it. So the ambition is undoubtedly large. How competitive is this sector? And are you trying to take on Elon Musk's SpaceX? No, we're not really. I mean, the best, like, I raise investor money, and so I'm used to telling investors this. You know, SpaceX is like an A380 that goes from one capital city of a, of a country to another capital city of a country and nowhere else. And so it might be the cheapest way to get to space to certain destinations, but space is like the earth. You want to go to other places. You know, you want to go from Sydney to, to Melbourne, from, you know, Brisbane to, to, to Darwin, etc. So you need smaller jets. And so we're the version of the smaller jet. So we're not really competing directly with SpaceX at all. We're in the same business as they are, but in a totally different market segment. Earlier, you mentioned that government and business doubted whether you could do it. Who do you see as your primary customers? Well, we've got customers from all over the world. So, you know, our sweet spot in our vehicles is, is satellites that are about the size of a small fridge. And so that's become almost the market standard around the world for satellites that can do either earth observation or communication systems. Um, and we have at least eight companies around the world and they really are all around the world. They're in, in Japan, they're in the United States, they're in Canada, they're in Europe. And they're all, they're all putting satellites up now, but they don't have enough access to rockets and they need more. And so, you know, we've got customers literally lining up, waiting for us to get our capability ready. And then the other interesting thing in the market is the defence departments of the world are now viewing space as an important sphere of influence for them. And so we, we've got interest from other nations' defence departments to launch their satellites as well. So... You know, the people, investors I talk to, it's it's not about, you know, what is the market? Is there enough money there? It's how quickly can you make the rockets and get them out the door? And if the technology works, is Australia geographically very well placed to do this? I mean, geographically, it certainly is. Like, we can go to places in space that the Americans can't get to from their launch sites, which is good. We have a very safe geopolitical environment here. So a lot of international customers have no fear when they're sending their satellites to us. We're not going to tariff them suddenly or anything like that. And so it's a handy place, not just from the geography, but from the political and the legal aspect as well. And so as you prepare for the launch, perhaps later this week, what are you planning to send up on it? Well, I'll tell you about the rocket. It's a, it's a three-stage vehicle. It's 23 metres tall. It weighs 35 tonnes at liftoff. It's got four main engines that put more thrust than four F-18s. So it's got a lot of thrust on it when it takes off. Because um, it's a risky flight, we don't have any expensive payloads on it. So we've got a camera and a jar of Vegemite. <laughs> Why are you sending Vegemite up? 
It's a little bit of a tradition in the space industry that you put something funky on the rocket and SpaceX put a, a wheel of cheese on their first Falcon 9. And we kind of sat down as a management team and said, look, we don't want to copy a wheel of cheese. It's not very Australian. What do we do? What can we send up that's really Australian? And everybody just zoomed in on Vegemite. And so we got a little jar of Vegemite on the rocket. <laughs> well, the very best of luck. Hope conditions do favour the launch. Thank you so much for joining the program. Pleasure.